Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. This guy's found an awesome slope. And today we're going to try to find some slopes too. Well, hopefully you remember how to determine the slope of a line. And, and before we can determine the slope of a line, we need a line. So let's start with this line. And you'll remember, I hope, that the slope can be determined by determining the amount of rise and dividing that by the amount of run between any two points on the line. Let's pick this point right there and this point right there. And let's figure out how much we rise. The rise is a change along the y-axis. And if, it's a, if it goes up, it's a positive change. If it goes down, it's a negative change. So let's go up one. From here to here is a rise of positive one. Now we got to go from this point back over to the line. And that's a positive 2 along the x-axis. So our slope is rise over run. Rise over run. It's plus 1 over plus 2, or positive 1 half. There's another way we can calculate slope. And this formula is the change in y divided by the change in x. That, that triangle up there, that's a Greek symbol and it's called delta and it means change in. So the slope equals the change in y divided by the change in x. Well, let's see how that works. We're going to need a couple of points on the line. And we're going to need the coordinates of those points. That lower point has an x value of 2 and a y value of minus 1. It's at point 2 minus 1. And the other point is at 6 positive 1. Now, if we get the change in the y values of those ordered pairs, and we divide that by the change in the x values of those ordered pairs, we'll have the slope of this line. It's really the same thing as rise over run, because our change in y value is a rise and a change in x value is a run. So let's see if this works out. First of all, let's, you can start from either point and go to the other point, but you need to be consistent. If you're going to start with your y's from one point, then you're going to have to go from that same point to get to your x's. So let's start with our higher point and we'll subtract the y value of the lower point, minus 1, from the y value of the uh, higher point, positive 1. Then we need to do the same thing for the x values. It would be 6 minus 2. Now 1 minus minus 1 is the same as 1 plus 1, or 2. So it's 2 over 4, which equals 1 over 2, which is the same slope we had when we calculated rise over run. Well, there's more that we, that we can do with this formula for slope, change in y over change in x. Here's an example. Let's say I had a point on a coordinate grid, and it was at 2, 4, an x value of 2, a y value of 4. And I were to tell you that there was a line that ran through that point with a slope of 2. Could I figure out some other points on that line? Well, I could. That slope of 2 equals a change in y divided by a change in x. So one simple solution to a change in y divided by a change in x that equals 2 would be 2 over 1. 2 over 1, 2 divided by 1 equals 2. Now what this means is that I've got rise over run, a change in my y divided by a change in my x. 
My original XY coordinates were 2 and 4. So if I add this change in Y of 2 to my Y coordinate, and then I add this change of in X of 1 to my X coordinate, I'll have another point that's on this line, 3, 6. 4 over 2 also equals 2. If I multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator of the original equation, or the original uh, delta y over delta x, 2 over 1, if I multiply both the top and the bottom by 2, I get 4 over 2. 4 divided by 2 equals 2, so that also is a slope of 2. A change in y of 4 plus a change in x of 2 will result in another point that's on the line with a slope of 2. That would be 2 plus 2 and 4 plus 4, or 4 and 8. Well, how about this one? Minus 4, minus 2. Minus 4 divided by minus 2 is 2, so it's got the right slope. How did I get minus 4 times minus 2? Well, I just multiplied the top and the bottom of the 2 over 1 by minus 2. Now, if I subtract 4 from the coordinates of my original point, or from the y value of my original point, and I subtract 2 from the x value of my original point, I'm going to get 2 plus minus 2, comma, 4 plus minus 4, or 0, 0. And that's also a point on this line. And the line had looked just like that. You try this one. Hit your pause key, try the problem, and when you get finished, hit your forward key to move on to my answer. In order to find the slope of this line, I'm going to need a couple of points. And I could pick any points, but it's probably best to pick points that are at the intersection of grid lines of the two axes just going to make your numbers a lot easier to figure out. And then I'm going to go from one line, or one point, to the other point, and figure out how much I have to rise, and how much I have to run, to get from the first point to the second point. Well, let's start at that lower point, and go up to the level of the higher point. That's a rise of positive 4. I'm going up on the y-axis to larger numbers, so I'm increasing my y-value by, by 4. I've got a rise of positive 4. Now, to get back to the line and get back to the other point, I have to go to the left towards the smaller x values. That's a change of minus 4. So, my slope is the rise, positive 4, divided by the run, negative 4, or a slope of minus 1. We've got two points on a line, 6, 3, and 2, 6. And we're asked to find the slope of the line. Well, you remember that slope equals the change in y divided by the change in x. So if we find out how much our y values change, and then find out how much our x values change, then we'll have the change in y, and we can divide it by the change in x and come up with the slope. But one thing that's important is if we're going to start with our y values on this point, and compare them to the y values on this point, then when we get around to our x values, we also have to start at this point and compare it to the x values of the other point. Well, let's do that. And let's start with 6, 3. Our change in y values would be 3 minus 6. And our change in x values would be 6 minus 2. 3 minus 6 is minus 3. 
6 minus 2 is 4, so our slope is minus 3 quarters. We know a point, 4, 6, that's on a line with a slope of 3, and we're asked to find another point on that line. Well, we know the slope is 3. Well, 3 equals 3 over 1. A rise of 3 and a run of 1. It would also equal 6 over 2. A rise of 6 over a run of 2. Would it equal minus 3 over minus 1? Or how about minus 6 over minus 2? Yeah, it would equal both of those as well. But let's use the 6, 2. And what we're saying is that we want to create a point from 4, 6 that's moved up 6 and it's moved 2 to the right. Moving it up 6 and 2 to the right would create a point on a line with a slope of 3 that ran through point 4, 6. So, we're going to use 6, 2, a change in y of 6, a change in x of 2, from our starting point of 4, 6. So we'll add 6 to 6, and we'll add 2 to 4. And we're going to get a point 6, 12. Now that's just one of an infinite number of points you could have come up with. If your point is on this line, then you got the right answer. Can you find the slope now? Well, let's find out for sure. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet and the answer sheet for Finding Slope. Then go back and try the quiz on Finding Slope. Well, I hope you had a good time and learned a bit, and I hope we see you again real soon.